Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Learn to Speak English lesson. My name's Johnny. This is Near Native English, and I'm very excited to begin this first lesson in the Game of Thrones series. So, without any further ado, let's begin. Lord Star, there are five pops. One for each of the Stark children. The Direwolf is a sigil of your house. They were meant to have them. You'll train them yourselves. You'll feed them yourselves. And if they die, you'll bury them yourselves. Okay. So in this scene, the Stark family come across a dead elk and a direwolf mother. As it seems, they had a fight where the both of them ended up dead. And there are five visible direwolf pups left to defend themselves. And then Jon Snow says, Lord Stark, there are five pups, one for each of the Stark children. The direwolf is the sigil of your house. They were meant to have them. So what exactly is a sigil? Well, a sigil is an inscribed or painted symbol considered to have magical power. So you would have seen the banners in Winterfell that have the picture of the direwolf as it is House Stark's sigil or symbol. Think of the words sign, mark, seal or symbol as they have a similar meaning. So let's take a look at some common word combinations. So we can have a mysterious, magical, personal, or even a Tibetan sigil. Or you may have a sigil stone or do some sigil magic. Anyways, let's move on to the next clip. Why is your mother so dead set on us getting pretty for the king? It's for the queen, I bet. So in this scene, the boys are getting cleaned up as the king and queen are coming. And John says, Why is your mother so dead set on us getting pretty for the king? So let's take a look at dead set. Well, dead set is when you are completely certain about wanting to do something. Or if you are firmly decided or determined about something. So in this scene, Caitlin Stark has firmly decided that all the boys need to get their hair cut and have a shave. Uh, so some similar words are intent on, fixed on, or determined. And some common word combinations are being dead set on life, or probably the most popular use is being dead set against something. Uh, for example, if a mouse could protest, then it would be dead set against cats, as cats prey on mice. And now let's move to the next clip. I hear he's more than earned it. I hear he's a drunken little lecher, prone to all manner of perversions. Clever girl. We've been expecting you, Lord Tyrion. So in this next scene, Tyrion has gone to the brothel as he really loves prostitutes and doesn't have any interest in mingling with the Stark family or socializing with the Northerners at all. And this is the first time he has met with Roz and she playfully talks about Tyrion as if she doesn't know that it's him with her at the time. And she says, I hear he's a drunken little lecher, prone to all manner of perversions. So firstly, let's take a look at prone. Now prone is an adjective and if you are prone to doing something, it means that you're likely to do it, have a habit of doing it, or are susceptible to it. Think of the words likely to or inclined to. And some combinations are to be more or less prone to something, especially or highly prone to something and some things that people are commonly prone to are violence, depression, 
disease and just like this poor man here you might even be prone to accidents or even injury and hurt yourself all the time so now let's take a look at perversion so perversion is a noun that describes the twisting or corruption of the original course meaning purpose or state of something it's similar to corruption misuse twisted or immorality so let's take a look at some combinations so someone might facilitate or be accused of alleged perversion perversion of justice or perversion of the truth now you might be thinking what does that actually mean so perversion of justice is when a person prevents justice from being served for example making fake evidence or getting rid of evidence or threatening a judge or a witness etc and in some countries it's even possible to get life imprisonment if it's serious now some other types of perversion are sexual or moral perversions and a sexual perversion is described as behavior that is considered abnormal immoral or unacceptable so let's also take a look at the meaning of lecher so a lecher is basically someone that's only interested in women sexually although it can be other the be the other way as well or overly sexually promiscuous so when Roz calls Tyrion a drunken a drunken little lecher she does this in a playful way because Tyrion has a reputation for only being interested in drinking and prostitutes and she herself is a prostitute uh, so let's move on to the next clip where is he? The Dothraki are not known for their punctuality. And Choma, Chomaka, Karl Vejbin. So in this scene, Daenerys and her brother Viserys are waiting to meet Karl Drago who is to be her new husband and although he comes riding on a horse with his men it seems that they are a little late to the meeting and so Viserys asks where are they and Illyria replies the Dothraki are not known for their punctuality so let's take a look at punctuality punctuality is a noun that means to be on time always showing up when you say you will or starting something at the appropriate time some similar words are promptness regularity or the quality of being on time so when we are talking about punctuality it's more common that we are actually complaining about someone or something's lack of punctuality uh, for example this guy here waiting for his bus isn't happy about the bus's punctuality as he's still waiting there so some common combinations are lack of punctuality poor punctuality having great punctuality or someone may be known for their punctuality and now let's check out the last clip when do I meet with the car? we need to begin planning the invasion Carl Drogo has promised you a crown. You shall have it. When? When their omens favor war. I piss on Dothraki omens. I've waited 17 years to get my throne back. So in this scene, the series basically wants to know when they will begin the invasion. And Illyrio responds by saying, when their omens favor war. So an omen is a sign of something about to happen. Think of the words sign, foreboding, indication, 
or prediction. So omens can be good, bad, ill, or even evil, depending on the culture. Uh, for example, a black cat in some cultures is a bad omen, representing witches and bad luck, or even death. Whereas some other cultures, a black cat is a sign of good luck and prosperity. Some other good luck omens include four-leaf clovers or butterflies, which can also represent endurance, change, hope, and life in some cultures. So some common ways to use this word are to take something as an omen, or something can be considered an omen. And some common omens are an omen of death, an omen for good luck or bad luck, and an omen of victory. And that's going to just about do it for this lesson. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. But as always, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.